Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I am going to explain you Ethernet LAN protocol that is also referred as i 3 8 802.3 protocol. Before I explain you this protocol, let me show you how many things that I am going to cover in this video. So, first of all, I will be explaining you basics of this protocol. Then I will explain you how frame format is there with this protocol in which I will explain you each and every field along with practical case studies. Then I will be explaining you parameters of IEEE 802.3 protocol in which I will explain you how to identify minimum size of frame and for this protocol how much efficiency is there. That efficiency that we will calculate based on minimum size of frame and maximum size of frame. So, let us see first how many basics are there with this protocol. So, when it comes to basics, then you should know this protocol is also referred as IEEE 802.3 protocol and with respect to time, this protocol is continuously evolving. Earlier version was having speed of 2.94 Mbps, then speed have upgraded. You see after that 10 Mbps, 100 Mbps, 1 Gbps, 40 Gbps, 100 Gbps. 200 Gbps and 400 Gbps speed that is available till February 2023 and work is there in progress for 800 Gbps and 1.6 Tbps. So, with respect to time speed is increasing means you can say bandwidth that is increasing with this LAN protocol right. Now, here there are few essential key points that I am going to explain. And based on this key points only, this entire protocol that is structured. Like when we talk about topology, then you should know this Ethernet LAN protocol that is implemented on bus topology. There are few instances in which you will be observing TAR topology is also there with this protocol. But in majority of cases, you can say bus topology on which this protocol is implemented. See here, media access control that is done by CSMACD protocol. On CSMACD protocol, I have already made video. You can go through my computer network playlist in which you will be finding this video. CSMACD protocol that detects collision. And because of it detects collision, you don't need to provide acknowledgement over here. So, with Ethernet LAN protocol, we don't forward acknowledgement. Here, we will be retransmitting frame based on collision detection. See, as if you want to retransmit the frame, then user will be waiting for random time period and that random time period will be defined by back of method. So, along with CSMACD, here we are having back of algorithm that we have it to identify random wait time for retransmission of frame. So, on back of algorithm also, I have made a separate video, you just go through that, right. So, back of method that is used to identify random wait time, right. Here in physical layer, we will be having Manchester encoding. So, on Manchester encoding also I have made separate video. So, at physical layer, we are having Manchester encoding and when we talk about channel, then here initially channel was deployed on twisted pair cable, then gradually they have updated their channel with coaxial cable. And right now, with optical cable also channel is available. And based on bandwidth itself, you can understand like 400 Gbps bandwidth. So, that is possible only if you have optical cable. Otherwise, that huge size of bandwidth that is not possible by twisted pair cable or coaxial cable, right. So, that huge bandwidth that is available because of optical cable on which this protocol is implemented. And here, at last, you can say error detection that is happening by CRC. So, in this protocol, error detection that is been done by CRC. For that also, I have made a separate video. You just go through it, right. So, these are the basic things that is there with Ethernet protocol. Now, very essential part that comes which is frame format. Now, when you see this frame format, first two fields that you need to understand first, that is preamble and SOF. See this preamble is having size of 7 byte and SOF that is having size of 1 byte. It is added by physical layer. So, whenever you see this question like is it like this field is there based on frame format? 
so no it is not there based on frame format as it is added by physical layer why the reason is when we talk about frame i have already explained you when we talk about frame in framing section i have told you frames are generated by data link layer so with these frames physical layer is adding some additional information so that is not frame right frame is produced by data link layer remember this so here see here with this frame format this preamble and sof technically that is not a part of frame but these are the bits that we are forwarding on channel so you see this preamble plus sof that is a bits as per 101010 only last two bits that will be 11 so this last two bits that explains we are starting the frame so here last two bits that will be 11 right so this 7 byte plus 1 byte so 8 into 8 means 64 so in total 64 bits will be there out of 64 bits only last two bits that will be 11 so that explains you we are starting with the frame so we are using this preamble plus sof for clock synchronization and that is been added at physical layer remember this that's why you can say this is not a part of frame right now mac address of destination and source that comes under the field so mac address that you should know that is a physical address of device so whenever you are transmitting data you will have to have physical address like for example as if i say here we are having one computer that is connected to another computer and that is connected to another computer now as if as if i say this is computer 1 this is 2 and this is 3 and here if i say one wants to send data to three then here this transmission that will happen via two so here what will happen is whenever computer one is sending frame at that time destination mac address destination mac address that will be of two and source that will be of one that is how they will be sending frame now once this frame reaches over here then destination MAC address that will be 3 and source that will be 2. And now that will be forwarded to 3. See, this is how things will happen. So here there should be there should be physical address. Right. So that physical address that will be what MAC address over here of destination and source. And you should know MAC address is having size of 6 byte and 6 byte that is having 48 bits. You can say 12 nibbles are there. 1 byte is having 2 nibbles, so 6 bytes that is having 12 nibbles. Each nibble can represent one hex number. So you can say MAC address size that is of 6 byte, 48 bits, right? And you can say 12 digit hex number. Now here length field is there, you see. That length field that is of 2 bytes. So this 2 bytes that explains size of length, size of frame. So size of frame that is given by this length field with two bytes. But remember here we do not include preamble and SOF. The reason is this length field that we generated data link layer. So data link layer will be having idea about this much data only. Right. So this length will be a length of this much frame. It does not include preamble and SOF. That's why I have told you preamble and SOF that is not a part of that is not a part of frame format but on channel we forward it for clock synchronization and for start of frame that you can see now very essential field that comes that is data plus pad in majority of books you will be observing they are just writing data over here but i have mentioned data plus pad pad means padding now why should we have padding first of all the reason is minimum size of data to be forwarded over here that must be that must be 46 byte now for example if you have data which is having size lower than 46 byte then then you'll have to add padding over here like if you have data with size of 23 byte and you will have to send 46 byte then what you will be doing you will be adding 23 byte padding over here right so if data size that is lower than 46 byte then only there will be padding otherwise there will not be any padding right so this data frame or you can say data size that is having minimum size of 46 
एंड मैक्सिमम ऑफ वन फाइव डबल जीरो बाइट राइट तो इफ यू ऑब्जर्व मिनिमम साइज ऑफ फ्रेम दैट इज सिक्सटी फोर बाइट हाउ सी डेटा इज हैविंग मिनिमम साइज दैट इज फोर्टी सिक्स नाउ इफ यू एड मैक एड्रेस ऑफ सोर्स एंड डेस्टिनेशन दैट दैट इज सिक्स प्लस सिक्स ट्वेल्व प्लस टू बाइट लेंथ दैट इज फोर्टीन प्लस फोर बाइट सी आर सी तो दैट इज एटीन तो एटीन प्लस सिक्स फोर्टी सिक्स दैट इज सिक्सटी फोर एंड इफ यू हैव मैक्सिमम साइज ऑफ डेटा दैट इज ऑफ वन फाइव डबल जीरो अलॉन्ग विद दैट इफ यू एड एटीन देन यू विल बी हैविंग वन फाइव वन एट सी दिस इज आउ मैक्सिमम साइज ऑफ फ्रेम एंड मिनिमम साइज ऑफ फ्रेम एंड मैक्सिमम डेटा एंड मिनिमम डेटा दैट इज दर विद अस राइट एंड सी आर सी दैट वी यूज इट फॉर एरर डिटेक्शन हियर वी हैव फोर बाइट ऑफ सी आर सी दैट इज यूज टू डिटेक्ट एरर इन दिस एंटायर फ्रेम राइट नाउ नाउ एसेंशियल पैरामीटर्स दैट आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस नाउ वाई शुड वी स्टडी दिस पैरामीटर्स द रीजन इज वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड Why minimum size of frame that should be 64 byte? So here in IEEE 802.3 protocol, I have told you we are using CSMS CD, right? We are using CSMS CD protocol. So in CSMS CD protocol, in CSMS CD protocol, I have told you for collision detection, basic condition is what? Transmission time that should be greater than or equal to two times of propagation time, and transmission time. Transmission time that you should know that is length of frame divided by bandwidth and propagation time and propagation time that is distance divided by velocity. If you substitute that in this basic formula, then you will be having length of frame means L that should be minimum by 2d b by v means 2 into distance into bandwidth divided by velocity. So that is what minimum length of frame. and see this formula that formula will gives you minimum length of frame but here practically when we implement uh, ethernet lan then different lans will be having different size like my office is having five computer somebody is somebody else will be having 15 computer some other people may be having 100 computers so lan size of ethernet that will even vary with respect to users so i triple e 802.3 that that people have came together and they have decided minimum size of frame that must be that must be greater than 64 byte and based on this 64 byte minimum size of data that came and that was 46 byte right so based on this calculation only they have decided now question is that based on protocol efficiency so let me explain you minimum protocol efficiency and maximum protocol efficiency So minimum protocol efficiency that is based on data size by frame size. Now you see minimum data size that is forty six at that time frame size will be sixty four, right? Minimum data size that is forty six, forty six plus eighteen that is sixty four. So that is minimum efficiency, and maximum efficiency that is mini maximum data size that is one five double zero plus eighteen that is one five one eight. So that is maximum efficiency, right? Now here i have seen some issues which is there with respect to csms cd and real time application let me discuss those issue csma cd and real time application that is having some issues see in csma cd in csma cd what we do we detect collision we detect collision right and what if too many collisions are happening what if too many collisions are happening what if too many collisions are happening in that situation in that situation user will be waiting for random time period in that situation user will be waiting for random time period in real time application you don't need to wait for random time period like let me tell you some of those real time applications like video call in video call you cannot wait for random time period right in video call you cannot wait for random time period like as if you wait for random time period then uh, people cannot understand what is happening in terms of audio and video right so real time application cannot afford csms cd it cannot afford csms cd now you might be thinking like practically we are implementing it 
then how real time application cannot afford csm std that must be the question that you are having right now isn't it hi hitesh sir can i ask you one question yes mansi you can definitely ask question sir with our system in a computer network we use ethernet lan why it supports real time applications like video call so that is what the case which i am going to explain over here like if you observe here in csma cd we are having collision right and in real time application we cannot afford random wait time period but i have told you you see i have told you with respect to time this protocol is evolving initially speed was 2.94 mbps right now up to 400 gbps speed is available in future you will be having 800 gbps speed or probably 1.6 terabytes of speed so as bandwidth is increasing as bandwidth is increasing collision is having lower probability why the reason is higher the bandwidth lower the probability of collision right so because of higher bandwidth availability probability of collision that is decreasing and as collision probability is decreasing what is happening in real time application you are having better experience like you can say in 2022 whatever video call that you are having with your devices that is far better compared to the video call that people were used to have it in 2010 right and probably in 2030 i can tell you like in 4k you people will be doing video call in 2030 with 4k video quality you will be doing video call you just see that scenario in 2030 right so that is happening because of bandwidth is improving with respect to time i hope it is clear to you still if anything that you would like to share it with me please note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video.